Hi church, Pastor Steve here with our Monday Minute for March the 30th of 2020. We're a week now into our stay at home, stay safe order and all of us have had to adapt in a number of ways just like we did for our Sunday worship yesterday. One thing we'll be doing here at the church office is adapting for a while and so we'll be resuming what are our normal summer hours. So someone will be here in the church office from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. during the week to answer phone calls or uh, facilitate any other questions or business that we might have here at the church. Now again, if uh, you do need anything, please feel free to contact us. So if there are needs in the community, we'll follow up with those as best that we can by either calling the church office here, or you can send us an email uh, or contact us by phone as those have been made available. Also, don't forget to check your email and watch online through our social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel for many of our offerings that we'll have, including this one during the week and our Bible studies and other events that are taking place. This week, I wanted to share with you a lesson from the Gospel of John. It's actually part of our readings for the season of Lent. And specifically, this is from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of John. And it's a rather long story, so I will encourage you to read it for yourself. It's John chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. And as you do that and you're able to reflect on things on your own, what I want us to keep in mind is that I think there are things that we can learn from this passage in these days and also why it is important for us to be reminded of this story during Lent. See, this chapter is about the healing of a blind man, which Jesus uh, and healing, of course, go hand in hand throughout the Gospels, but yet there is so much more that is going on in this particular healing story. Overall, this story I think is about much more than that. It is about challenging assumptions. And the clue that we get from that is how the passage starts off. You see, the old ways of thinking were that if someone sinned, they received a punishment. And so, therefore, this man's blindness must have been the result of either a sin he committed or perhaps of his parents or even his grandparents, as sins could be visited, supposedly, to the third generation. So it starts out with the disciples asking Jesus who had sinned, him or his parents. But Jesus challenges that assumption and he says, neither. He is this way so that God's glory might be revealed in him. So Jesus then goes about restoring his sight. Now, you would think the result of this would be joy and excitement. But in fact, the result of this is disbelief among the people and among the religious leaders of the time, the Pharisees. See, they try to discredit the act either by saying that this cannot be the same person or that it is impossible that Jesus could have healed him because, well, the day that we are told is it was the Sabbath day and one surely would not do that on the Sabbath because that would be considered work and therefore a sin. And therefore, Jesus is a sinner and sinners, as we all know, can't heal, if you follow along with that. The assumptions that they brought to the event had blinded them from being able to see what God was doing right in, the, in their midst through Jesus himself. Now again, there is a lot that's going on in this passage, but I think the overarching theme is how and what happens then? And they assume to be true. How much more so can it happen to us and what we assume to be true that really isn't true? In our series for Lent, Come to the Table, we've been examining the ways that Jesus invites us to be at the table and invites everyone to be at the table. And the song for which this is based on by Sidewalk Prophets looks directly in the face of those assumptions that we all make about faith and even about the church. For as much as we believe in love and grace, unfortunately, the church has been guilty of being very Pharisaic, if you will, like the Pharisees, when it comes to how we actually practice this. 
We assume that there is a certain type of people that need to come and that there is a certain way that people need to act and uh, people need to dress before that they can come to church. And we even believe that there's a certain way that things are supposed to be in church. And if it is not that way that we are used to having it being, then it isn't church, especially with all these different people around here dressing in different ways and acting in different ways. The funny thing is, we approach Jesus with these assumptions and expect, like the disciples did at the very beginning, to have the narrative of our assumption be affirmed. But Jesus will always challenge us to go deeper. He'll challenge us to go deeper in the love of our neighbor in which we glorify God. Jesus will always challenge our assumptions as to the who and the how and the what of being a faithful follower is all about and will remind us that even the ones that we think aren't deserving are made deserving of God's grace and love because of Christ himself. Recently, of course, we've had to set aside our own assumptions of what church is and what church isn't and how we are supposed to be the church. We've been forced for the sake of others, not only that, but their health and their livelihood, to set aside our assumptions and to adapt to how we worship and how we are the church. And the results, I think, have actually been quite astounding. Already, by being forced to go online, we have been reaching more people during the week than we ever had before with our weekday ministries. We're learning new things, and God is revealing how we can be the body of Christ in new ways, and that God's Spirit cannot simply be contained in a building on Sunday morning or on Wednesday night. I'm reminded, as I read through this passage and as we are going through this time together, that the early Christians lived in hiding and in secrecy, and they could lose their very lives for admitting that they were a follower of Jesus. So they met in secret. They met in catacombs, they met in uh, houses under the cover of darkness, and the result was that their fa the faith of Jesus Christ and Christianity was spread far and wide because of their everyday lives. They set aside their assumptions and they showed love and grace and mercy to others, even though they could not show it fully to the world. Eventually, that love and grace that they showed and that they shared with one another could not be contained and the church grew and it spread. When this pandemic is over, I hope that like the blind man who seeks out Jesus and cannot help but follow him, we will move on from our assumptions and continue to reach and welcome new people to the table in all of these different ways. We're already seeing the results of that. The disciples at the end of this passage ask Jesus, surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus tells them that if you have to ask, then we still cannot see. One thing I think that we can see is that when we get back to normal, and I will put that in air quotes, what we will have is a new normal. And we cannot go back to what we were before, lest we not show people the glory of God that is being revealed to them in their midst through what we have been forced to do, but as a result have increased our reach so that others can know about Christ, hopefully including this message today. So this week, let's continue to share. Let's continue to reveal the glory of the love of Christ in our everyday lives the best way that we can. Let's stay safe. Remember to stay at home. Let's take care of each other and let, let Christ's glory shine through the darkness of this time into the light that will be revealed in all of our time. Have a great week.